everyone, Rodney here at Klebs Tech, and today I have a quick video to show you a great new tool from the creator of Focus and ControlNet that does video. It's called Frame Pack. Now, the difference, as you'll see here, is that you can see the results of some of the video while it's still generating, and this can be run on a laptop with six gigabytes of VRAM and can do very long video clips as well. This clip now running was generated and is 15 seconds long. I have yet to test how long we can really go with it, but I have seen people posting clips over 30 seconds. It uses the Hunian video model, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, and is easy to set up and ru get running in either Pinocchio or the normal way as well. Now, this was just released, so there's no support for things like LoRa's, but I would not be surprised if that comes in the near future. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on how to use the tool, and then I'll show you quickly how to set it up both ways through Pinocchio or the default way. I also do wanna direct you to the GitHub page, even if you set it up with Pinocchio because he does have a lot of tips on using frame pack on there. I'll give me a quick rundown on how to use frame pack. I have it here running in my browser, not in Pinocchio. I'm using it the default way. And like I said, I'll show how to do both, uh, set up both afterwards. Now, one thing I do want to mention with anything like this is if you run into any issues, if things aren't don't seem to be working or anything, just go open up your command window or terminal, go in there, see what's happening in the background because that'll usually get you an idea if there's any issues. You usually have errors and stuff like that in there. Your interface here is pretty simple. It's not that complex. You have your image here where you put your starter image. Now, this only does image to video, not text to video. We'll go ahead and I'm gonna throw um, that image in here. So you put your starter image in there and what'll happen is it'll be the um, same aspect ratio of whatever the image is that you put in. So keep that in mind. Now, the next section is obviously the prompt, if you've used AI tools before. So we'll put our prompt in here that we're going to use. I'm going to use tracking camera, a green Porsche driving at high speed down a country road away from the camera. Down here, there's a few different options. Some of these you're not probably going to mess with for the most part. I will actually work from the bottom up. So your GPU inference uh, preserved memory, it's set at six. Leave it at six unless you run into out of memory issues, because if you increase that, it will take longer to generate. I haven't had any problems. I've so far generated 25, 30 second videos now with this. Haven't had an issue. Now I am running a 4070 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM uh, just for reference. So don't mess with that unless you find you need to. If you're running out into those out of memory issues, increase that a little bit at a time until you find what works for you. These two, the steps and the CFG scale, they don't recommend changing them. I haven't touched them and I'm not going to dive into what each one does because I don't know exactly every program slightly different and how it affects things. But usually the steps, number of steps, the more steps, the higher quality in theory. I haven't seen any issue using 25 steps. Now, here you have your total video length. It goes all the way to 120. I don't know if you can do more. I don't think you really need to do more than a couple minute video clip. I'd be interested to know if anybody does try or for this one, we'll just do a 10, about 10 seconds. Now the seed on this one, I don't know if negative one, a lot of programs negative one would be random. I, I don't know if that's the case in here. Since it's not using a random seed, if we hit generation, don't like it, and we try again, you're gonna to wanna to change that seed. Otherwise, you're just gonna keep getting the same result pretty much. So the T-cache setting, if you've used any of these before or watched my WAN 2GP videos, what that does is it predicts what steps can be skipped along the way, these steps down here, and it speeds up the generation considerably. I don't know exactly how much on here because I haven't fully tested it yet. Downfall is you might see a reduction in quality. Now, for certain videos, it's probably not going to matter. But if it's something that has like hands and fingers, stuff like that, you might start seeing weird results from that. So you can always turn that off if you want to see if you can get better results that way. But it will take longer to do that. I've been running it with that on and I haven't run into any issues yet, but I haven't done anything very complex with it when it comes to like hands and fingers on a person. Uh, dancing those you might want to and there's a lot of information uh, if you go on to um, the github page for us and I'll put a link there is a ton of tips in here and examples that you can go and look at to get an idea of what the results like this one talks about the difference in results with using the tcash and not using the tcash which and that's not working for me at the moment there's a lot of tips on here different prompts and everything else he's got suggestions for that sort of stuff 
so like I said, I use the TCache most of the time, but if you get something that doesn't look quite right, you could try turning that off and running it again and see if you get better results without that. Once you have everything all set up in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit start generation. I'll pause my recording as I do this, um, as we get to each step. It happens pretty quickly. Usually on my system, I have 4070 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Usually in the first couple minutes, I start getting results over here. As you can see down here, it's at step, well, sampling one of 25. That's the 25 steps that we have set here. So, and once that gets up to 25 out of 25, then you'll start getting your first results. And it's usually around a second of video that'll come up over here once you get your first set of results. Up at the top here, your next latency, that's gonna show you basically what the frames are coming up. Um, so you can get an idea what's coming up. And so a couple minutes have gone by and we now have our first results. As you can see here, it's just one second of video. And this will update down here, um, this section momentarily. There we go. So as we can see, we have 33 frames now, uh, one, one sec, 1 1.1 .1 seconds of video. So now we can kind of get an idea of what's happening. And if we don't like what we're seeing here already, we could just hit end generation. Now at that point, when you do hit end generation, you don't lose the video. You can still download that video at that point. Probably I didn't use the best video to demonstrate this per se, but what this shows and it notes that down here. What you're seeing right now is the last second of video in the whole 10 second clip. It works in reverse. So the frames that you're seeing at this point, this section video is the end of the video. For example, let's say you had a person picking something up and your prompt was have the man pick up the ball. If you see the video, the last second and they haven't picked up the ball or whatever, then you know that it didn't work. You could just end it from there, try a different seed, try changing the prompt or something like that, and then start over again. So I, I find that is one benefit of it doing it in reverse. A lot of times you'll know what the end result's gonna be at the end of the video to know if it accomplished what you're looking for. Now, obviously it may not work well at the beginning and I've had a few videos that I had one where I had it picking something up and that part worked, but the first part of the video, the first five seconds, the person didn't move or anything, which wasn't an issue because then I could, I took that video clip and I could just cut the first 10 seconds and then use the rest of it at that point. So it wasn't a bad result. I just didn't use the whole clip. We're now seeing the next set. Now this video, like I said, it doesn't necessarily demonstrate perfectly. The first thing I am noticing with this, because one of the problems I run into with a lot of these videos is that the car is not moving or it's really crappy results or all sorts of weird stuff sometimes, or the tracking camera is not working. This way I could see if that's not working right away. And if it's not what I like, I could hit end generation and try something different. And as you can see already, we're almost ready for the next one second of video clip. Okay, and uh, about 30 seconds later, now we have the next two seconds. So now you can see now we have the last two seconds of the 10 second video clip and it's moving along at a pretty good clip here. And now you can see we are got the next chunk of video. So we're now almost up to, well, three and a half seconds of video, 105 frames. And a couple minutes later, and we are now up to almost five seconds of video. And now we are up to uh, just over seven seconds of video at this point. And now we're all done. Everything's all set. We have our full 10 second video out of that. That ended up working pretty well. Now I'll do one more, just a quick one. Let's see the robot. The robot dances gracefully with clear movements, full of charm. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Oh, so we're gonna wanna download this now. So you just click on the download button and save the file. So let's go ahead and run this one. I'm gonna leave everything else the same and we'll start the generation. Oh, we got our last second of video, which is actually somewhat entertaining, but we'll let this run out of curiosity. Maybe the first few seconds will be better. So at this point, Looking at it, we now have, well, this hasn't updated down here yet, but we have almost four seconds of video. And the end of it, it warps. So I'd cut off the end 
but up until the end so far that's not looking too bad so i'm going to let that run just to see what we get okay and the video is done and as we can see the last part of it ended up not coming out that great but the rest of it worked out pretty well so all i'll do is download that clip cut out the last couple seconds and overall i'm very happy with the results except for this balloon didn't take off until the end but other than that okay now i'll show you how both ways of installing this i'll show you well, I'll show you the Pinocchio way first, since that's quicker, and then I'll show you how to do it through the normal way. So if you're not using Pinocchio, I do recommend it. It allows you to install a lot of different things, and it's real easy, just a couple of clicks. Everything's done for you. With a lot of programs, it can be difficult to set up. Frame Pack is not quite so difficult. If you don't have Pinocchio installed and you want to install it, you just go to Pinocchio.computer, click on the download, and it'll bring you to the download section and it has the instructions and everything um, for how to install it. Once you have Pinocchio installed or if you already have it installed, this is what you'll have for your main interface. Any programs that you have are in here. So we'll go up to the Discover section up here and then you're going to be looking for Frame Pack. Right now for me, it's the top one since it just came out yesterday. Or you can search for it and find it. We'll just click on that. Then we're gonna click on download. It'll open up a new window, save as, you can give it a name. I just use the default, click on download. Now it'll take a few seconds. It'll go ahead and set things up, clone the environment. Then you'll get the install option. If you wanna customize it, you can go into here if you wanna be able to share it or anything on your network. Otherwise click install. Then it'll go ahead, it'll download everything it needs to. And this does take a little bit of time depending on what you have for a network connection, everything, because the files for this are, I think, about 40 gigabytes because it has to download the models and everything. OK, and just like that, everything's set up and running. And at that point, you can go ahead and use it for installing it locally without Pinocchio. It's not too difficult. Go over to the GitHub page which I'll include in the description. And on the GitHub page, you'll see, if we scroll down a little bit, there's an installation section, and we're gonna be doing the Windows stuff. I'm not gonna be covering the other stuff. I assume anybody that's on Linux, there are instructions on here that you can do that. I don't have a Linux system set up for this. I do have one, it's just not set up for this sort of stuff. I'll go ahead and we're just gonna click on the download, the one package here, make a folder that we wanna save it in. This doesn't install it on your system. Everything goes in a folder if you've used Focus before in the past. It's a similar setup to that. So we'll go ahead, it's be a 7z file, which is a seven zip file with Windows 11. I I think it'll just automatically extract, you know, just like you would a zip file. If you're on Windows 10, like I am still, you would need to download 7-zip program here at 7-zip.org, set that up and use it. So here we are. We have our file downloaded. I'm gonna go ahead and extract that. It's extracted. I'll go into the folder and we're gonna have, this is the folder structure here. You're gonna use the update one to first update because you wanna make sure you have your latest updates to it. Okay, there we are. So now we're fully updated. So whenever you wanna update, just run the update.bat file and that'll go ahead and update frame pack. Now we'll just go ahead and click on run.bat or double click, I should say. Now, once that goes ahead and runs, it should go ahead and download all your models and everything at this point, and then it should launch. Now, that would be on your first use. Once you've used it once, then when you run this, it shouldn't have to download any models unless there's a, some updates to the models or anything like that. Okay, so once it's all done downloading all your models the first time, and it does take up a decent amount of space, I wanna say around 40, under 50 gigabytes, um, 40 something, I believe. Everything will be downloaded, you'll see in here. Now this will just be the first time you launch it. Obviously, once you have everything downloaded, you won't have to go through all that. Now, once it launches, just like it'll then launch in the browser window, or you can go to this IP address here, um, your local, IP and the port number, and you will now find frame pack here. And it works just like it does in Pinocchio. Now, the one thing you're gonna wanna do is whenever you wanna update, you're gonna go into your folder that you extracted to, and you're just gonna run that update.bat, not while frame pack's running, obviously, but go ahead and run that, make sure you have the latest update, and then 
run the run.bat. And that covers everything with this video. If you found the video helpful, please do consider hitting the like button or even donating a cup of electricity at the link in the description. I do also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel that way as well. These videos do take time to research and make, and sadly, they don't make much from YouTube. I do want to thank you for watching and hope you have a wonderful day.